Hi, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. Today we're looking at the Fisher & Paykel uh, nasal mask. It's the Evora nasal mask. It's a very interesting design, definitely pros and cons. Now, before I get into this review, please consider liking this video or subscribing to our uh, YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is based around basically reviewing every single SKU that we have on our CPAP website, which means uh, we review pretty much every CPAP product. So if you wanna have a nice little video database on anything you might wanna consider um, buying with your CPAP therapy, definitely check out our YouTube channel. Now, diving into the mask here, we have basically a cradle CPAP mask. So it sits right underneath your nose, okay? It doesn't uh, like go into your nose, like for example, uh, ResMed P10 would go into your nose. This is just a cradle. And it is, as you can see, it's very minimalistic. We have one band that goes around the head, another band that spans the top of the head. At the front of the mask, we have, again, like I said, the cradle. It connects to the headgear, and then we have the tube coming off of it. The tube then connects to the tube of your machine. To remove it, you can just twist it off like that, and to put it back on, it goes like that. Now there is a quick release here. If you just pull the end of the tube, straight it'll just pop off like that as you can see and then if you want to take the whole thing off just remove it now a lot of masks have this feature whether it's the elbow up top or the tube up front um, so you might notice that you might accidentally have this portion on your old tubing you're like why don't my new mask fit oftentimes it's just the remainder piece of your quick connection portion of your tube setup now going into the mask fit itself we have the top headband it has kind of uh, baseball cap design. So as you can see on the top here, there's buttons just like a typical old school snapback or snapback hat. And you pull it down and you can click it into place, just like that, okay? Um, so once you kind of select the size you want up top here, this is not really something you're probably ever gonna change. Uh, yeah, you can change it while washing it, but at least you know after you snap it, you know which hole you're going into. Um, and then it's very easy just to relocate what size you need and snap it in place after cleaning, but you're not gonna be really touching that day to day. And that is because it kind of has a baseball cap design. With one hand, you can take the mask off just like that and then put it back on just like a baseball cap. Now to remove everything from the front, it's fairly easy. So we can just basically push the mask and the hose down out of the headgear, push it down and the whole thing pops up. And then you can separate this by just pulling it off. Just like that. Again, I'll just show you, this is the bottom and you push and it just comes off like that. Um, and yeah, so it's pretty simple. Everything breaks down very simply and you can wash this and clean this. Another interesting thing with this headgear is that this portion here of the headgear is not like a fabric material. It's more like a plastic that's covered in a fabric and that allows the uh, part of the headgear to sit, kind of rest, kind of hovering above your cheek so you don't have those red marks um, rather than being stuck against your cheek and uh, creating red marks and irritating you throughout your sleep. So that's kind of an interesting thing, whether or not it works in practice. Um, I can't use this mask on a day to day, I'll explain why in a minute, so I don't really know, but I assume that it does help with a little bit of irritation there. Putting the mask on back together, we can put the hose back together like this. The Fisher & Paykel uh, logo is up, up top, so we click it like that. So the F and P kind of is up the top there. And then this guy just basically gets pushed on. Super easy. That being said, on the cushion itself, if we take it off, there's no arrows or anything to show you which way is the right way up. And both look kind of similar. So it is one of those things that I would have liked to see like a little dot or something just to indicate that this is the right way up because if you're going the opposite, it's not exactly intuitive, like it doesn't really work, you might be a little confused, it looks somewhat similar upside down. So that is one thing that, I guess it's a small gripe about this, but it would have been nicer to have like a little arrow showing you which way's up. Either way, it only goes on one way, so you can't mess it up. Now, like I mentioned, this mask is a mask that I can't use. And the reason why is because it's such kind of an innovative design and I'm not sure how they did their R&D research, but it seems like perhaps the sample size of what they chose uh, to be the models for modeling this mask was quite small. Based on reviews on normal masks, what I see is generally you have a huge consensus of people who like the mask and it works, and then you have people who are mentioning, this kind of digs into your skin, this doesn't fit quite right, there's some leak in the cushion here. 
but I can still use it here and there. For this mask, what I'm really seeing is people are saying, wow, like the Evora mask is such an easy nasal mask. And then the other side of people who just can't use it, who it digs into their skin, and there's two complete opposites. So it's a really hit or miss mask. For me, with the shape of my head and the shape of my nose and whatever, this mask just simply cannot work for me. It's almost impossible. One thing is I feel like my head, or I know my head is smaller uh, than average, so I have to use the smallest head size, but they have like, you know, larger head sizes than this. And I don't know who would have such a huge head to use the biggest one here, um, but I definitely know people, friends of mine who have smaller heads than me, um, that wouldn't be able to use this mask like at all. Like they probably wouldn't even be getting it on because even the smallest size, I feel is like a pretty average head. Okay, so when I put this mask on, as you can see, the sides of the mask dig into my ear. And this is what the smallest size. So I can't actually increase the, uh, I can't actually lift this up at all because this is the smallest it goes. So this is digging in my ear. Um, also, the back band here, if it's sitting behind my head, it's digging into the ear. If it's a little bit up further to minimize the digging of the ear, the mask fits better, but it's very, very loose at the same time. With just a small tug, uh, if I roll over anything, if I'm not standing up straight, the mask just begins to fall off. So the back thing, the back headgear definitely has to stay down, so it irritates the ear. And even so, like, I'm not sure if you look at this, but if, if you lift it up just slightly, my whole, like half my nose comes out. Now I have a very squishy nose. It lacks cartilage and it's just a small squishy nose in general. As you can see, there's no structural integrity. There's minimal cartilage in there. Um, so for people with noses like mine, this mask is like completely impossible. However, I think that people with even shorter noses or wider noses in general, um, just wouldn't really be able to use this mask. It's almost geared towards someone with a large head and a fairly standard pointed nose of a maybe Caucasian male would kind of fit, but anyone else with like a shorter, wider nose um, like myself uh, just can't fit this mask. One of the reasons why is because the sides, we have these stability wings here and they're shaped in a way where, you know, they, they can only be so wide, right? And then so there's there's no, extra widening there and then the silicone is within that creating this kind of lip here and so if you don't have the perfect nose to fit into this exact shape like you're just going to be bending and leaking the mask any which way that coupled with the headgear that only suits particular sized heads with particular sized ear placements and you're starting to get into a mask that's completely niche and fantastic for a group of people but can't really um, work for other people. Now, of course, everyone has a different shaped head. So it's awesome that this mask probably works with a significant amount of people. But if you're watching this review and you've never had this mask before, um, and you're buying it online or something like that without trying it on, it might be one of those masks that you're gonna be rolling the dice on. Now, another mask that is a nice cushion nasal mask, which is one of my favorites, is the Dreamwear mask. And as you can see, the hollow frame goes upwards to the top of the head, and you have this arching right over the ear and the back of the headgear can sit behind back of the head. So what this means is, for example, if I put it on, no matter who you are, this section here is never gonna to touch the ear because it's such like a high arch and you're still getting the support on the back of the head where the more sturdy portion of a headgear to you know clamp onto right back here. So you're getting the stability without interfering with the ear and going ni nicely down around the nose and it's going down and around the nose um, to create that seal kind of going upwards versus going pressure um, pushing at the front of the face. Whereas with the Evora mask, this line is a lot more horizontal. So if this is down at the back of the crown, this is gonna be pulling up. If this is at the top of the head, it's gonna be kind of being pushing down and this is not gonna be fitting right. So it has to be kind of just right and if it, if it is just right, as you can see, this guy's ear doesn't really get bothered, but my ear and perhaps other people's ears would. So it's kind of a weird shaped mask um, because of that. Now, on the flip side of it, if this mask does work for you, I think it has a lot going for it. For example, it has the baseball kind of feel to it. So even 
even though I can't use it because it would leak for me, I can put it on basically with one hand. So you have arthritis or something like that. It's perfect for that. You can take it off to go to the washroom, slap it right back on. It's fantastic like that. Another portion is it's extremely small. It can back down and squish quite flat. Uh, because these portions are hard, it can't crumple into a little ball like some masks can, but uh, it's still very minimal and a lot of people might like that. Another fantastic feature is the front exhalation ports are little dots up above. So if you have a partner, you're not shooting them in the face uh, with like a single jet of exhalation air. Uh, it's gonna be dispersed nicely, um, so you're not gonna be bothering them. So there's definitely a few things going for it. I think if you have a medium to pointy-ish nose with a slightly larger head, this mask could definitely work for you. Um, but I feel like if this is your first time in CPAP therapy, you don't know what mask to get, um, and you're just ordering something online and you've never tried masks before in person, I think you might be rolling the dice on this mask. Now, one last thing to conclude with this mask is that it is a front mounted mask. So for if you're new to CPAP, you might be wondering why some are top mounted and some are front mounted. Um, with a front mounted mask, it is a little you know, easier and simpler for a manufacturer. Some people don't mind it. Um, and it doesn't have any air rushing um, at the side of your head. So you don't hear the air rushing at the side of your head. The one downside is once you put your tube in, say you have your tube at the bedside table or uh, you know, like hooked on uh, maybe like a CPAP tube hook and you're rolling in bed, obviously you're gonna start to get maybe some discomfort. Um, you're rolling around, it could wrap around you. Tube drag can be generally more of a problem. Um, but if for example, we take this off and we put on a top mounted mask such as the Dreamwear. With a top mounted mask, because the swivel is up top and this is on kind of the side of your bedside, um, you can roll around as much as you want and it's not really gonna interfere with you. Um, so that might be another kind of decision-making factor if you are new to CPAP and don't really understand the difference between where the elbow placement is. That's definitely one of the bigger factors in decision-making. So I hope you enjoyed the review of the Evora nasal mask. Uh, I know I was harsh on it. I believe that it's definitely a really great mask and a really easy, simple mask to take on and off, but it's obviously gonna work for some people and not work for others. If you wanna see more mask reviews, check out our YouTube channel. If you choose to buy one of our masks um, or machines, check out the cpapstore.ca. We are Canada's biggest supplier of CPAP supplies, um, and you can actually contact us directly on the website if you have any questions or use our chat. Uh, we're happy to answer any of your questions. So see you there at the cpapstore.ca.